Hi everybody, so last week we were going over designing for the cold prongs and a couple people asked me to show them how you pull the prongs over the stone. So I'm gonna make a quick video on that. It's pretty straightforward and simple, so you shouldn't have any issues with it. Let me know if you do. Uh, but you wanna have everything cut, file, sand it, oxidize if you're oxidizing it, cleaned up, brushed, whatever, sandpaper finished and be completely done and ready to go before you set the prongs. So I have my setting. This part is the base. Then I got my four prongs because I can't have it, you know, it's not gonna be held in there with one prong or two prongs or, you know, uh, one at the top, one at the bottom will slide out from side to side. So I need to have all the areas covered. And then make sure that you have your bail. I'm gonna actually put the jump ring right through the top part there. There's an open space. If you don't have that, you need to make sure you punch your holes or drill your holes um, or have designed the bale into the piece. So, and the snake here, that could, I guess, potentially be a bale, but it's going to be a design on the front of the stone. So, I'm not totally sure this how this is going to turn out. We are going to find out together, um, hoping it turns out okay and that everything holds it. But, you know, some, some of this is a designing uh, guessing game until you get it right. So anyway, hopefully everybody's is go goes pretty smoothly. Um, all right, so I have my cabochons. My I have a labrador for you guys. You have your clear glass cabochon. Um, you're gonna wanna take your flat nose pliers. I would highly suggest wrapping some masking tape around it so that you don't dig into your metal. Um, that way, you know, you don't have the sharp edge. Um, depending on your prongs, and we've talked about this the last couple weeks, Depending on your prongs and what metal you use, you may need to um, cut a little bit into, get a pointer, you might need to cut a little bit into your design like this way and 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 this way so that you can actually bend these up nicely. If you use that brass, it's going to be real hard um, to bend nicely so you might have to just cut in a little bit leaving a tab straight in the middle. Um, so that it stays connected to the design. For this, it's silver. It should actually be soft enough that I can just bend them. Um, if needed, also, you could create, this is pretty thin metal, so I'm not gonna do it. Um, but if you need it to, if it was pretty thick and you're like, I cannot move this at all, what you could also do is cut straight into the side here and create a little bit of a groove. And maybe I'll make a little one just so that you guys can see. Let me zoom in here. Okay, really tiny. You don't want to do this too much. I get a little nervous about showing this and then having every, you know, having anybody snap their prong um, just because we don't have a way to really recover. Um, but you could, you want, you want to go with the shape. So try not to, if it's a curved shape, you're going to have to be careful about doing this. But you want to go like that and... Just taking a little bit of that metal. This would be, this is actually a trick for scoring and bending. So when you want to create 90 degree angle, so creating a little bit of a line there so that there's a little bit of negative space and when that, ah, whoopsies. And um, when we bend it up, bends a little bit of a sharper angle. Maybe I'll do that for all of them. And Okay, and then we got what, two more. You don't want to go too far down. You wouldn't want to go like halfway through because again, as soon as you go to bend those prongs up, they may just snap on you. So we want to avoid that. So I'm just creating a little bit of a groove. This will help when I'm bending. I'll just give it like a little bit of a um, that area where it's going to want to bend a little more than it normally would want to. So it doesn't just like curl over. Okay. And then if, even if you created a little bit of a groove, you could always then go back in with your triangular file or square file. and dig a little more out. 
That way, if you're having a hard time holding your jeweler saw like I was in that one area, you're not, you know, not make, putting your hands in dangerous way. And this works great for really straight things, like straight designs. Um, again, if it's a curved design, it's just all situational. Yeah, that actually is pretty deep. This is just going to help, again, that bend. All right, that should be okay. All right, and then I suggest covering your flat nose pliers with some tape. And then using those, I'm gonna actually cut it down so I can get in there. And this, so that I can actually see what I'm doing. All right, there we go. And that the tape doesn't get in the way of the bend. So I'm gonna put those right there and there. The tape just helps keep it from um, scratching the surface up so that your metal pliers don't scratch into the surface of your metal. Especially if you have a nice finish on it. You don't want to be like, just like mauling it up. So I got one prong up. I'm going to bend the next one. And I do it with my right hand. Hold your design in your left hand. And this is actually, I'm glad I made those little grooves in there because it is wanting to bend that gemstone shape, especially because of all those negative spaces. Just bend them in half. So really create that, a, a little bit of a groove in there. And you can even, if this ha is giving you some trouble, what we can do is... Create a little bit of that groove and then take your steel block. Let's see if I can do this. Where is my hammer? I didn't think I was going to have to do this. So. No, that's not going to work. All right. Well, maybe I need to actually. Might actually have to dig in there a little bit further. So I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to be, um, do you not want to have to be hammering on the front surface too much? I was going to put, some dents in there and that's not going to be good. a little better. And this has to do with the fact that the prong is a little thick. <laughs> so it's normal. It's a little wide. It's going a little wider for design purposes, but this is giving me somewhat problems. So I might actually have to saw into the sides of this. Let's see. If I want to get this prong to
All right, where is my stone? There you are. Okay. Actually, use my bench pin, push it over a little bit. Getting those prongs up a little bit higher. If you have your bezel rocker. You can keep that out. I'm trying to think of, you're just gonna have to do some crazy, figure out some crazy ways to get those prongs over. So they're actually cut, like gripping the stone. And it may just take some finessing. You might have to make those prongs a little smaller, you know, depending on what is happening. there and you can see it's taking me a little bit of time this isn't like a do 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 it feels like it should be like a real quick flip the prongs over and be done but it's a little bit of a process you're trying to get the prongs over there nicely not break your stone um not break your metal piece you know all those things you also want to make sure everything's done before you start bringing those prongs down, especially because we don't have a way to anneal the metal. Um, if you start putting the prongs down a little bit too soon and you're like, oh, I forgot to do saw this thing out, and you have to pull those prongs back open, when you go to push them back down again, the likelihood that they are going to snap or not even move at all on you is pretty big. And then I'm gonna fold the I'm gonna fold the snake up now and see if I, he will help keep a he or she snake it can be a she snake um, help hold this stone in place a little bit better so it's not slipping and sliding everywhere. So we're getting there. So I need to get the, I need to get everything uh, smooshing down on that stone a little better than it actually is right now. So I'm gonna try and hold it down the bench pin and I'm gonna try and pull back Squish that prong down. I got one side. It feels pretty good. But now my stone's a little crooked, so I'm going to fix that. Slide that back to the position I would like it to be in. And you can kind of see why I've covered that the prong, or the, the pliers and tape, because It would be mauling up the surface right now if I did not. And I think I'm going to, 
I might have to go back and reoxidize this a little bit because it's gotten a little marked up. But I think I'm going to get it to a point where it's actually holding it up pretty good. Oh, let me move that sneak out of the way. There's that side. All right. Oh, that's holding that in there really good. So it's not shaking anymore or wiggling and the stone's not wiggling around in there. Now my only dilemma I think right now is that snake is wanting to stay kind of upright so I'm going to start trying to bend it a little bit. Maybe I'll take my round nose pliers. If I can find them. There they are. Hmm. We got the round. We got the flat. We got the chain. Let's see which ones make the most sense here. So you can see what I'm talking about. It's kind of sneaks kind of popping out there. But so far is what we have. We got the back of it. We got the front of it, and that stone is pretty secure in there. I want to tighten up those prongs a little bit because if I was wearing this, I would be able to hear it rattling a little bit, and I don't want to hear it rattling because it will torture me or whoever may be wearing this. But that's pretty much it for, uh, there we go. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of manipulation. So just moving, trying to force the metal to go what direction you need it to go. So I just widen that tail down there a little bit to enable that top of that snake to sit flat against the stone because I don't want that to catch on anything. So there we go. We have the stone sitting flat against there. And I'm going to again, um, I'm going to try and squish these prongs down a little more again. They're sticking out a little bit, but I kind of don't mind that. If this were a different design and it didn't call for, like it would look weird if those prongs were sticking out like that, I think I would be bummed. But because it works with the design, I'm going to go with it. If yours doesn't and you're frustrated, you're like, I don't, did not want these prongs to be sticking up like this on my piece. We'll work through it together. That's looking pretty cool. I kind of love the way that looks. And these are things like, for anybody who's watching this that's not in my class currently, if anybody is, I've been sharing this with a few other people that are doing at home jewelry making. Um, you know, if that wasn't what you were going for, sometimes it's just a little bit of trial and error when you're making jewelry, jewelry and you're designing your own designs and you're not making something that's already been you know, you've already seen. So that's why we often teach in base metals so that students have a chance. They're not, you're not totally invested in the metal and, um, you know, put the money out for it. And then to find out that your design didn't quite work out the way you thought it was going to. So that's why we start out, you know, paper models and then, um, paper models are always a good place to start. And then working in a base metal, and then if you're committed to your design and you're like, I want this in silver or gold, then you invest the money into it. All right, there we go. And again, I, right now what I'm doing is just keep finessing the, I'm trying to get the bottom prongs to look the same as he, at each, each other looks, but I also don't want to break those prongs off and they're getting a little sensitive down there. No, and now it's moving. Maybe I will actually, instead of trying to smush them down more, I might actually just no, what was that? And one of my 
my sides broke. Darn. So my piercings were a little too close to the bending points. One more thing, and then I think we're done. All right, there we go. Now it's sticking in there. And I think I'm gonna have to go back and reoxidize a little bit, but uh, no, hold on. Is pretty good okay so just keep bending those prongs um, it's a little hard without being able to kneel it again depending on what metal we're using um, but just you know reach out with any questions you may have to bring these prong lines in again if they're giving you a hard time you might have to saw in a little bit and make it where it's just a little tab, um, depending on what, how big your prongs are. And then, yeah, so as long as you have the four, four to six prongs holding most objects in. And then I have the little snake on the front for some like added fun detail. But it's also really holding that in pretty securely. So there you have it. If you guys have any questions, please reach out. And then, oh, last bit, last but not least, would be the jump ring. Um, you do have some wire you, that you should have left over uh, that you could use to add a jump ring to it and attach it to something. So if you have it and you're like feeling inspired to, uh, feel free to do that. Let me see, I'm gonna grab. Let me grab some chain and show you what I mean. All right, I have this chain. This is not long enough, but I'm gonna at least do it for, try to find an oxidized jump ring. It's not pretty, but it is oxidized. I will probably change this later to a nicer one, but for now, it will do the trick. So if you are making it into a pendant, 